Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we will wait a few seconds because people are entering the Zoom. But thank you all to be here. Thank you, Kara, for your time and your dedication in, in coaches' education. It's so important for us, for our team, to still support the coaches in these new rules. So thank you also our PAC team to do this, the facility and the opportunities to join with the coaches. And we are going to record all of this session and also Kara send the presentation for all of you. So after that, we if you want some questions and it's okay in that moment, but after you are going to have the presentations too. And um, para las personas que hablan español, los entrenadores, hay una opción de interpretación simultánea. Entonces pueden eh, cliquear solamente en la parte de abajo. Hay un botón a la derecha que ustedes pueden apretar y la sesión va a ser en ambos idiomas en simultáneo. Sí. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Cara, and it's all of you. Thank you very much. And hello to everyone. Um, for wherever you are this morning, this afternoon, it's nice to join you all. Um, today, I'm going to be speaking first to the apnea um, and how we are timing pre-hybrid apnea and tracking it. So I am just going to pull up my presentation for you. And again, as Victoria said, we have this all ready to go in PDF for you, which will be sent after today's session with a survey. So no need to take screenshots. Um, it will be sent to you directly and absolutely able for you to then share and use with your federations and with your colleagues to then share the information. Because the more we share, the more everyone will know, which is fantastic. So Pan Am Aquatics is thrilled to uh, share this presentation with you as a resource. So as you may know, um, at the beginning of this year, um, thanks to great input from the coaches committee led by Tammy, um, they put together free hybrid apnea maximums, um, which would implement a maximum time for free hybrids in routines. So these are for the free hybrids only. That has been a major question that has been brought up. It does not include your technical required elements. It does not include acrobatics. And it does not include any transition movements where you may have any breath holding. It is only for free hybrids. For those of you who can remember back to the early days last year when we were timing time underwater for hybrids, this is the exact same method. Okay, of breath to breath, which we'll talk about in one moment. But I really wanted to clarify, it is only for your free hybrids, okay? Another question we've had a lot is why? Why free hybrid maximums? Our number one reason and the number one reason the coaches committee advocated for this was for athlete safety. Athletes and coaches were pushing their hybrids to such um, incredible numbers in the apnea um, that we were worried for athlete safety, especially in the developmental age groups, that they were wanting to push their DD so far that the athletes were not breathing enough. They were not getting enough oxygen time. And the second reason was that there was a lot of community feedback from athletes and coaches and judges technical controllers, that they wanted to support the goal of a balanced routine with time underwater and beautiful hybrids, but also of enough time in transitions for that artistic impression mark. Again, the goal to have a balanced routine is one of the initial goals for this system. So we felt because there was an insane amount of apnea time going on, we had lost the beauty of the above water part as well as we're very, very worried on athlete safety. So those were the top two reasons for this implementation. So for hybrid apnea maximums, 
Uh, I'm going to go through each age group and just so you know where it is appearing. So for 12 and under, this was a recommendation from World Aquatics for continental and national implementation. And for those of you participating, it will be in place for the Pan Am age groups in Peru for 12 and under. So if you are preparing teams for that competition, please be aware of um, that, that, that you need to conform to those uh, maximums if you want the bonus. For youth, again, this is a recommendation for youth worlds when it would be occurring. This is not a youth worlds year, but it will be next year. It is also a recommendation for continental and na national implementation. And again, this will be in place for Pan Am age groups in Peru in August. So if you are preparing teams for that competition, you would need to know your apnea maximums for youth. For junior, it is going to be in place at Junior Worlds and Pan Am Age Groups. And of course, um, from a World of Aquatics perspective, we hope that continentally and nationally federations are adopting this. Senior does not have maximums in place. Okay, so that would be the same uh, for senior age group competition. In Lima, there would not be apnea maximums in place. And correct me if I'm wrong, Tammy or Victoria, but I would think it would be the same World Aquatics for those senior age group. It does not exist by the time they get to senior and they are adults, um, athletes, more prepared um, between the athlete coach relationship. We hope they have apnea in place that suits their ability level. Correct. So these are screenshots right out of the document um, from World Aquatics that everyone should have now. So just to go over kind of what you see in the columns, because we also um, put in the factor information just to get that out from the World Aquatics perspective. But in the very first columns where you'll see my big yellow arrow, those are the maximum apnea times that you would need to have in place. One minute in solo, 115 in duet, et cetera. The column to the left with the percentages is just for information. It's just to tell you when the coaches committee was um, deliberating what to do, they landed on, you know, that a maximum of 50% of your routine time in 12 and under was okay to have as hybrid apnea. So that's what that means. It's just for information. The numbers you need to remember are the ones that are circled. That's what you need to comply with if you want to be eligible for that apnea bonus. Youth, same thing. Look at that time column. The percentage column is just for information. That's all. You don't need to be calculating percentages in your routines. It was just to let you know where, how much of the routine time equates to a percentage. So for solo free, your max is 110 down to 130 maximum for team free and combo. And lastly, our junior limits noting that we have our technical routines first and then our free. Again, the percentages are just for information. So you're always looking at that time column with the yellow arrow. And ACRO has none. So ACRO, you are completely free. Just to highlight that, there is no apnea maximum. Of course, apnea wasn't really an issue in acrobatics because the main focus is, of course, the DD in your acrobatics and then all of the amazing creativity you do in between. All right, moving along. So how do we time this? How are we implementing this? So how to time free hybrid apnea maximums? So the great part is, as coaches, you are already entering their routine parts into the coach card. So your hybrid breath to breath time, it's already, you're already preliminarily um, tracking it for us, which is very helpful. 
So we are asking you, please be accurate in this entry. It'll, you know, make less work for you. And also then you're keeping track of your, what your maximum is in itself in a way. And then you could time your athletes to make sure everything is accurate as a cross check. On site at a competition, the people or the volunteers who are timing your free hybrid apnea, we then use the coach card as a guide. It also helps so we know when the free hybrids are coming. Because when we're timing on the side, and I did that job myself at a national championship um, recently, you do need it so you don't jump the gun and like time, start pressing it and it's not a hybrid. Sometimes the athletes are tricky. They kind of do a little body boost, but then come back up. Um, you know, in that case, you kind of just have to stop immediately and just know, you know, I added an extra second there by accident. We are just hu human when we do this. Um, but to have the coach card helps immensely um, between the two timers so you know when the free hybrids are coming. As a timer, we time the cumulative time of all the free hybrids. So we're not like looking, oh, that hybrid was 15 seconds and then writing down 15. Oh, the next one was 13 seconds and then um, writing down 13. We just start and stop the stopwatch as the routine goes and then would log the total time that's on our stopwatch. Say it's a uh, junior free solo and there's seven hybrids we would have um, the total time for those seven, okay? So it's a continuous timing situation, not adding times together. At the end of the routine, the timer writes down that total cumulative time that they see on their stopwatch on a timing sheet provided by the referee or scorer and as I just said, we don't take down, you don't need to start doing individual hybrid times, just the total time. And we have a little picture of the Pan Am form that will be used. You kind of imagine two timers sitting on opposite sides of the sheet. Say it's me and Victoria, uh, Victoria's timer one, and she would write down what, um, that it was competitor number one and what her time was. I would write down my time. We would see that the time was under the maximum and everything is great. In the case where someone perhaps is over, and let's just say very over, um, and this process will be worked out, I just had to flag the ref and kind of signal that, you know, no hybrid, uh, it went over the cap and the 40 point bonus would not be added to the routine. You know, we took uh, it, it with a positive light assuming that everyone would get it. And then when they didn't, our score simply had to uncheck the button with the 40 point bonus once they got the signal that it was not included in the total. Okay, and that was definitely at a minimum um, at our national championship. Um, almost everyone else got it, no problem and complied. So speaking to that again about the free hybrid maximum, there is a 40 point bonus. So there was a positive spin put on this as a bonus, as opposed to a penalty for a routine uh, that did not comply. And I got a great question this week about it. Is it 40 or 0.4? And I was like, no, 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 it is 40 points, like 40.000, not 0 0.40 um, because uh, we wanted the bonus to matter, to actually, to make a difference. So not just point four, it may not be a very high motivation, this new system where your scores are over 200, um, but that it actually had to be significant for the bonus to matter. There is a three second variance from the stated maximum to allow for timing differences. Again, the humans doing it are timing. Uh, timing it so human error uh, we wouldn't want to put it right on the dot and that bonus will be applied to the total routine score at the end of it so it's not going just to elements or it's not going to artistic impression it goes it's applied to the total at the end okay and I'm going to speak to kind of some examples now um, 
about like what what would happen in that situation. So let's say we have a junior technical duet and their free hybrids are timed at 28 seconds by the apnea timers. Uh, let's say I'm 28.3507 or something like that. Victoria's 28.13. You know, we're obviously both under. That's two thumbs up. The maximum time is 35 seconds. We've both timed under. That's a check. Away we go. No problem with um, that. Example two, we've got another junior tech duet and they are timed at 37 seconds by us. But this is also okay because they are within the three second variance. Okay, at 35 and we're at 37, okay, two seconds over, they're okay. They are under 38, right? Because that would technically be the maximum. And then lastly, we have another duet number three here Oh, but Victoria and I timed it. We both have 38.5. This is not okay. This is over the three second variance and they will not have the bonus applied. Okay, so there's not a penalty, but they will not. That is when I would flag the ref. Okay, let's say Tammy's ref. Tammy, they are over. She would ensure the score unclicks on the bonus and um, that routine would not get their apnea bonus. So my advice to you, coaches who are listening, you need to do the job and time your routines and practice. Maybe do spot checks as you prepare. We all know sometimes each run through is a tiny bit different. If you are running your routine at 38 seconds, you may be risking it. Okay. <laughs> you may be risking it it's not much different than a placement bonus if you're risking it in that last 20 seconds you probably want to make sure you are within a hair of that maximum of 35 if you're consistent consistently at 36 you're probably in the safe zone but if you're consistently at 37.5 i'd be just a little bit worried like you'd better make sure that you are consistently always under um 38 if you were 38.00 you're okay. Like zero, 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 right across. You would be okay. That is like the final safe number in there. Um, but yeah, that is my warning. Please be conscious of this. 40 points matters. I've seen it. It really, really does. All right. Speaking to the how to do the timing. So you're now at practice. You're going to do um, a test. Again, I'm gonna speak back to that initial hybrid um, guide or difficulty guide way back last year. This is cut and pasted right from it as the methodology on how to time. We go breath to breath. So if they're doing a pull down into the beginning of their hybrid, we're really timing <gasps> on that breath, we click. And then let's say they do a walkout. The minute we see their lips come up, we click off. We do time. My advice to anyone timing at competition, if you're a tech controller or a technical official and you're doing the timing, I try and do it to the benefit of the athlete. I really try and click as late as possible, not as early as possible. Um, please do that. Give them the benefits um, there of going in and going out. Also, you want to be sure they are actually going into it, that uh, you're not anticipating an entry when it isn't quite happening yet. We have an example if, um, say, they dive in and then they immediately go into a hybrid. Um, that probably is happening more often than an acro straight into a hybrid, but some solos especially will dive in and go right into, say, a thrust right at the beginning. Um, so you want to do it um, until the first movement of the hybrid. So I'd say as soon as you start to see those toes, you would start clicking. That indicates the hybrid has started. If it is a hybrid by chance, that's followed by an acrobatic, let's say it's in a duet, you would do it from the entry breath, that's the easy part, to the very last movement of the hybrid, okay, that they finish. I'd say this is in the 
this doesn't happen very often. Most athletes are, you know, the choreography and the routines is a full hybrid and then they move on to the acrobatic. I'd say I see the dive in into a first hybrid more often. This does happen, however, um, athletes start or end a hybrid at different times, um, especially in teams where um, we have our cadence in the tech team. Um, mind you, that is everyone has to go in synchronized. But in, in free teams, this is more often. This is more often in a free team. So you have to start timing and coaches be conscious of this. You need to start timing um, when the first athlete starts the hybrid and when the last athlete finishes it. Okay, so that is a little bit of something different. But as soon as you were, would see that first athlete um, go underwater, say they're starting a cadence body boost and then it's a full cadence hybrid. So you'd want to start as soon as that first athlete goes under and then starts the cadence until the last athlete comes up after, say, finishing the cadence. So this one is a bit different, but again, it's at a, it happens less often. It is a bit more rare, but it does happen in some routines. And again, you will have this slide deck with you, the full apnea document from World Aquatics. This is cut and pasted right out of it. But if the slides are more helpful, you could bring this to review with the apnea team at a competition. So you're all up to speed on how it works. And lastly, just for information, um, this just gives you an example of what it looks like in the scoring. So let's say we have an L your element score is, is 110. We all know that the sink error comes off the element score. We then add the artistic score. And then it's that 40 point bonus would then bring us to this total routine score of 241. If this routine did not get the bonus, their score would be 201. Okay, and if this is a situation, then of course with youth, then their figure score is added to this for their um, total score um, in the event. All right, and that is it from me. I guess um, any questions, Victoria, if people have them? Yes, I, it's one question in the chat. Yeah. Why are not allowed to start and stop and then add times? Probably just count the individual hybrids, I understand is the question. Um, yeah, I'm not the total. I assume it's that. If not, Sandy, yes. I think it's yours. You could do it. Yeah. I think I understand, um, you know, as far as World Aquatics and what we've tested, you're just writing down then a total time. It's so much easier. Then there's no rounding. I think there mm -hmm. was an instance of this, um, I believe, in Europe, and it did not go well because then there's the argument of rounding and adding times. Just all we have to do then at the end is, you know, look at our stopwatch and it's done. We don't really have time to start adding and doing all that mm -hmm. math. Sammy, you have. <laughs> yeah, I had a question because we um, recently did a competition with younger kids yeah. and, you know, they like to lay on their side. And so <laughs> our question at the end of that was, are we really doing it on the breath or should we wait till we see the face go in? Yeah. Because I sometimes would've... the breath is like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, I would 100% uh, okay. agree. And that's why I said I would. You wait until the last possible. Okay, minute. that's I what guess. we ended up doing. But, you know, it says breath to breath. So just, you know, wanted to make sure that we were following the true intention. I 100% agree. And I'm sure at age groups, maybe there's a little 12 and under conversation. Yeah. For sure, the youth and older athletes are getting in pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The and getting out ones, quick. Yeah, and getting out <laughs> quick. So yeah, the, our, our little 12 and unders, we can have a little bit more patience with and and trying to get it right but yes please give them the benefit of the doubt until like they really truly are under <laughs> yeah okay okay another question oh i think we have one in the chat 
So just guessing and saying I accidentally start early, it's better? Um, no, <laughs> later is better. <laughs> Let's give the benefit to the athlete. We're not trying to catch them. Um, but if you do by accident, like I had it happen, I honestly make a mental note in my head. I was for sure plus one second on this athlete because it's my fault. You cannot then restart your stopwatch, mm -hmm. but we're only human. Um, I would then write a note on the timing sheet, like minus one. Honestly, when I did that, the team's, the routine was still under and it was okay. Um, but if you happen to have, you know, a misfire on your stopwatch, then just write a note on the timing sheet tell the other timer um and if they were under and you were still under anyway um yeah. i think you can be honest remember this is the first year we're doing it um and you know we're we're not going to be perfect all of the time but we just have to be conscious of if we are the ones who potentially made a mistake there is only a three second variance that is still tight but again it happened once in a blue moon and you know, you just have to know, oops, I made an oops on that one, but don't stop. Don't stop. Don't restart your watch. Just, you know, try and mm -hmm. be fair. And hopefully mm -hmm. if the timers are around at Pan Am age groups, they can do some practice timing, you know, with a music practice, et cetera, and just, just, you know, get used to it first. Okay. Thanks, Cara. Another one. You spoke on the times and it's the average time of the two persons timing. No, it is that both are under there. It's like, it is no different than um, say timing the routine, timing the walk on, etc. It's verification from two people that it was under. Okay. So if one of the timers are with more than the three seconds allowance, they have to say the referee probably I, the bonus is not okay, something like that. Yeah, I think what we did at our nationals is that both had to be, like if it was both had to be under for okay. it to go. If one was over like, and one was under, I mean, technically I would probably, um, that does need a discussion. It depends how close it was, but I would want to retime it. What if someone's wrong? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you'll have to decide kind of on that. In in that case, we usually gave the benefit to the athlete that both had to be over for it to okay. Not be but in any case, it's a referee decision. Correct. This is not up to the timers. Yeah. This is to the referee. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And the next one is there a difficult degree safety limit in the across of senior team team tech and the free routines? Um, in senior team tech, it's a rule. It is two to two, six, five. And if you don't comply, it's a two point penalty. So it's not a safety limit. Um, it is um, a compliance to a rule for senior. Yeah. In free teams, there is no rule on what acro you do. There is no safety limit on senior or junior. It is only on youth and 12 and under. And same thing, you know, if you wouldn't comply, um, mm -hmm in 12 and under in youth, I believe it's a penalty. Okay, the next one. Can we see a real real example? Um, I don't know, probably we can make a video and yeah. time and send yeah. after if you want. Could we, if helps, could be yeah. a solution. Yeah, but I think it's not so bad. And as Cara said, if we have the coach Cara's a reference guide, it's, I think it's easy um, to try. Yeah, I think, as Carla said, probably the transitions sometimes are really tricky in the middle um, when ballot leg and turn and go up again. But it's mm -hmm. a little tricky in that moment. But if the, the coaches try to be really careful in the time when you start your coach car in the left side, I think it's really hard for the people timers after yeah the solos are especially difficult you know because yeah. they'll do an arch back leg thing and you think they're starting a hybrid and then they yeah. pop back up so, yeah for sure yeah please be really fine and careful when you feel your coach carrying that 
first part in the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one. That's in the relation to the 38 second. Uh, I'm not sure what's the question, Leslie. Uh, I think it might be like an example. Oh, of, okay. And I mean, honestly, I don't have examples. I My advice would be with a friend, kind of watch some routines and see what your, you know, what your um, times are. But as Victoria said, we could probably choose some videos from some national competitions that are having to comply to the apnea maximum um, I could try and find some and just you know put maybe a solo a duet and a team together that you could see let you know what the two timers got at competition and then see what your time was too we could probably do that um, especially those of you who may be timing at age groups to as a little bit of preparation or to help you in your country get ready okay another one what is the word no, sorry. What is what if there is a significant difference between timer number one and timer number two? Um, I would suggest um, we didn't quite have this happen, but if I were the referee, I would just say potentially maybe the bonus is on hold, and as soon as it's it's completed, then there's a retime. I think that would the referee would have to make the call that there's a retime on that. Okay. Yeah. Next one. How do you declare the apnea bonus in the coach cup? You don't. <laughs> it's not necessary. So, like I said, in the scoring system, and for most of us in the Americas, we use ISS um, system. It already has the bonus, like in good faith, in there for you. And the bonus is taken off only if you don't comply. So you need to do nothing. It's not like a bon a hybrid bonus. Think of it as a gift, and we will only take the gift away if you, you are over <laughs> your, your hybrid maximum, okay? It's already built in for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, another one. Can Underwater Time ask DTC review? Um, technically, I would think it would have to be a protest. Mm. It would be a protest just like any other protest, like a base mark protest. Yep. Yeah, that's how we it's... handed it on national competition. You had to pay your money and protest. Okay, because it's also it's not a DTC issue. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It would okay. be like protesting that your deck work time was over. Yeah, yeah. it's time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and next one. Is it any official education to take time or it's under technical controllers education? It is new. It's kind of on its own because the volunteers who may be doing the timing, they could be a TC. They could be a judge. They could be a volunteer with technical knowledge. Okay. It's not like technically an officiating. It's j honestly just like the timers who time the debt work and the routine who usually have some knowledge of the sport, but are not unofficial, so to speak. So I think we're handling the education um just like we would in other timing situations and doing sessions like this and maybe before pan am age groups once we know who the people are who may be the timers we'll run a little session like this but i think we could probably put together like a nice little module of exercises and a slide deck and kind of divide and conquer across all the federations so that we know everyone's ready and there's lots of volunteers available to do this yes good Another one. I have a question. If some breathe early than the team, the time stop when she breathes or when the last girl in the team breathes? Earlier. Well, you kind of, when a whole team goes under, <laughs> if it's not synchronized, you're doing your best to kind of get when they first go under and then when the last one comes up. Um, so I would say, again, try not to get into the weeds on this too much. I will say um, the closest on apnea on, are on solos. Duets are a little bit better and teams have been no problem whatsoever. The apnea is actually fairly generous on teams. Um, mm -hmm. So try not to overthink it. You know, 
when they're all going under, even if there's some synchro errors, it's really, like we said, you're timing from when the first person goes under and when the last person comes up. Okay. So, and then you don't want to worry about it because then the synchro TCs are taking care of anything over there. But if someone say pops up in the hybrid and you have to wait for the other seven to come up, then you're waiting for the other seven to come up. But again, try not to overthink it too much. Yes. Okay, the next one is Spanish. Entonces, el bono se obtendrá de la cantidad de escala hasta los tres segundos del máximo. Okay, I think she's asking if the bonus she you are going to achieve if you are under the three seconds maximum. Yes, yes. You're under the three seconds, you are good. Yeah, you are good. We start to get worried when you're over clearly over three. Yeah. Okay, the next one. Hi, just to double check, in arch boost and with the legs up, do we start the stopwatch when the athletes breathe or then or when the feet is going under just like an after I dive in the entrance? It's breath. So I'd be looking that they've taken their breath and say as soon as I see their like lips go under, I would click it. Again, I'm always I'm trying to do it to the benefit of the athlete to be sure they have like Tammy was saying, that they're done, that they've gone, okay? Okay, so next no, it one. It wouldn't be up here, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Next one. Do timers have clock of the routine in front of them to help them follow the coach car and current time in that moment? Uh, no, I did not have that experience. It potentially could. It would just uh, uh, depend potentially on the tablets available. But, I mean, if you wanted to, you could have a third stopwatch that starts as soon as the music starts. Okay. Also, we just have to be super organized on that. Yeah. Okay. Someone could test that for us. <laughs> sure. Okay, next one. If one world in a team routine stop performing the hybrid, all the others continue, we will time until the last one come up, right? Yep. You got it. Yes. Good. Okay, that's the last question. I don't know if you, some one of you have more questions. Oh, Olga has sorry, great Olga. Questions. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but Olga, uh, can you, you are not in the chat. Olga, I'm not sure. Can you open your mic? and ask. Uh, I have Olga and another person with the hand up. I'm not sure if they want to ask something. Okay, okay. 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 here is okay. one. Be careful with the mics. <laughs> Uh, hi, it's not only about apnea, but rules in general. Do we know if these rules will be used in 2025 or will system change again in 2025? Okay, well, I will say, and there was, um, if anyone has access to, if you're using the World Aquatics event app, the, I think it's Cider, it's called World Aquatics Insider. You can get it on your phone and it has all the World Cup competitions on it, meaning everyone has access. In the Paris World Cup, they actually have, I think, the team leader presentation. It has some information about what's going on right now. So, yes, I anticipate that, you know, there will be changes and World Aquatics has said that. They are looking at taking the community feedback especially on the difficulty table and making some adjustments um, to the table, which has been asked by coaches, officials, athletes, um, looking at the values, the skills to make sure we have enough for developing athletes. There's not quite enough at the top of the table for our little, our littlest developing athletes, um, as well as you know, simple logical changes like if you do a 720, it should be worth two times a 360 or a 1440 should be worth four times the amount. Like looking at time on task, 
you know, if we'd like to see beautiful, sustained, um, unbalanced twists, say five, six revolutions that take, gosh, six, seven seconds, that the value coincides with spending that much time on that skill. So that is what we are working on right now. Very fair, logical things that have been asked on us. I think Victoria, since last year, since last year, Markham, like we were getting feedback like that. So that is being worked on um, to make it more fair and then for everyone again. Um, there is also um, some consideration to Appendix 3. Um, as far as do we have the right amount of elements, there has been feedback that there's perhaps one too many. Um, and we always said from the beginning that that would be reevaluated because what we were doing was really looking at historical routines and trying to find the average amount. Mm -hmm. So now after two seasons, and then again, all of the feedback from the coaches and the athletes of do we have the right amount? And also that are we ensuring there's enough transition time? Do the judges have enough to look at for an artistic score right now when that is an issue? So those are the two main things. The big third thing is the acrobatic catalog is being revised. So for those mm -hmm. of you who know Anastasia Petrenko, yep. she is reviewing that. Um, she wrote that catalog when we still had 10 in an acro team. Okay, and then that the rule to eight happens. So she is revising it a lot of feedback to please simplify you know mm -hmm. how many codes there are so anesthesia is working really hard to reduce and simplify to have the cat catalog more simplified in allowances etc position choices for those four groups and then to make the actual catalog like your menu of choices of all of the other acrobatics almost as like an appendix as another resource document so that we perhaps don't have to print out of like a 500 page catalog. So she's really listened really hard for the past like 18 months or so on the feedback and we'll be working on that. So those are kind of the top three things. Of course, everything is just draft, but you know, the world aquatics people who are working on it are working really hard um, as well to not make it overwhelming for everyone, but rather to deliver what everyone's been asking for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another question. If the last hybrid not finished before the music end, when then when need to stop the time? Wait hybrid finish or stop waiting until the music ends? There it is. And the last hybrid not finished before the music ends. When we need to stop wait. That's a great question. Well, that hybrid would be base marked if they're doing the skills like yeah. declared skills there. Um, I ooh, that's a I don't know, Victoria. I mean, my gut feeling would be there's still an apnea, so it actually stop when they come up. But we may have to just take that away and ensure we're. Um, that's a really good question. A As a referee, question. I could say probably when the music stop because we okay. need. We count music That's to true. music, That's so true. probably, but it's not the final uh, yeah. decision, and it's not my decision. But probably we need to put this question That's and really. ask, and then send the Back correct. Down. Yes, for sure. That's a good yeah. one. Great question. Yes. Next one will be more education in acrobatics, for example. Oh yes, I'm sure. Once anything <laughs> new comes out, there'll be an education you know, blitz by everyone to make sure as usual, which I think is great, a usual like fall education um, curriculum that goes out there with any changes. No. Okay, next one. Will the requirement change after Paris, right? After Junior Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> so remember our last event is Junior Worlds. So nothing until Lima. Junior Worlds. Yep, that yeah. is the last World Aquatics competition. Yeah, the next one. What is the event password for the World Aquatics event inside app? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, you get uh, the app. You get the app and, oh boy. Uh, I, 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 I have it on my phone, but I don't know. Me too, I, I don't know. I think, I think what it is, it is um, you get the world, 
you get the World Aquatics Insider app, but then you add the World Aquatics Artistic Swimming World Cup 2024 that you get the four events. The password, I think, is in one of the information packages. Yeah, it's really probably. simple, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah, um, but we can check. And after that, we could send the uh, information. Yeah, I'm going to. If you go to the World Aquatics website and open any of the information bulletins. Yes. For China, Paris, Markham. Um, yeah, Super probably Bowl, in the bulletin. It it's in the bulletin. It's yes. in the bulletin. Okay, Olga, I'm not sure if you are with your hand up or not. Olga Seba? No? <laughs> okay, another one. Los movimientos extras antes y después de los elementos en la rutina técnica se tomarán en cuenta así como mismo después de acros como apnea o únicamente en híbridas. Okay, uh, um, Ariadna is asking about... Uh, extra movements prior or after the technical required elements if they are taken in account for dyspnea or just the free hybrids just free hybrid declarations on your coach card so that still falls into the technical required elements yes so no that would be really hard <laughs> yeah okay olga i um olga quieres hablar Victoria, muy buenos días a todos. Good morning, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's the same question, like Ariadna. Yeah, we are oh. still together. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Another question? Probably when you start doing at home, you have a little bit more, but we can be with the chat and continue in communication. We have a WhatsApp group with one coach per federation. So it's important if you have some question, ask who is the coach. Normally it's the head coach from the, the team. So ask the head coach and she can send us the question and forward. We can use this channel too to use the information. So that could be an option too. nothing more yeah feel free to ask anything else if there's something still on your mind that's in the guide or any experiences so far while you know we're still using the existing guide that we have now or anything um future related that was a great question kind of just on what's on the horizon Okay, Paola is texting me the the password so I'm going to put in the chat for the application. Thank you, Paola. Thank you. The app is really handy. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah. And then yeah. you get all the results and everything there. Yeah. Yes. It's so important. One to... more question in the chat, Victoria. Okay. Thank you. What is the event path for the World Aquatics event inside app? Below that one. No, sorry. Yeah. Are we have any group chat for up for Lima meet? No yet, no yet, but probably we will have one. Did you receive my answer? I, I couldn't see. I nope. can't see it anywhere. Okay. I'm going to put again, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, I think. Okay. Oh, I see it. It kind of went. I to... see it. Yes. Okay. If perfect. If you go to Open answered, it. it's in there. Okay. Perfect. I don't know if I can put it in. So it's easy. W A slash down s w a slash down 2024 okay questions on no more questions i'm just trying to think victoria if there's anything else that's come up that we could but i think that's uh 
I mean, I could give some, if you want to give some quick TC highlights as far as, you know, I think that even between Tammy, Victoria and I, I don't think anything is um, out of the norm. Uh, when you're unbalanced, stay unbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing a lot of straightening to vertical, completion of all your rotations wall to wall. Um, drop of two levels in our fives. I think we're finding athletes really push up high. And then because you're pushing so up high at the beginning, mm -hmm. you can't stay at like your high, 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 high thigh, and then mm -hmm. it'll go down two levels. So as TCs, we do see that. Um, yeah. Also when start off from a pike, so sometimes oh, yeah. happens. Starting go really go. Yeah. Yes, correct. Um, Be careful. Anticipation into the next movement. Yeah. Um, make sure you have your connection definitions correct. Yes. Um, one leg forward, one leg back does not exist yet, but you can do this way, side to side. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you're up in the vertical cone. I think Victoria mentioned, um, and we did have this recently as well, when you're doing a C4 plus that team in a row of four. Mm -hmm. If I'm like trying to connect to the person, but my leg is so low, I'm out of the cone that is no longer. So that would be a base mark situation. You've got to make sure it's up here nice and, you know, in the vertical position cone when there's a connection, um, not stretching to nearly splits to like make your connection. Um, yeah. Otherwise those were probably like the highest on the list of calls for us um, as far as free hybrid. So not much change. I'm sure it's like a, a record that just keeps repeating on those same things. Um, and, you know, it's errors in the moment of the, of the competition, you know, every swim is unique and different. Um, even as TC as well, we're gaining information and sharpening our eyes at practice um, of note is sometimes you'll see a practice that is like, wow. And then something happens in the run through and competition and vice versa. You'll look at a practice and be like, Oh, Oh, Okay, but you have to be like, I hope they pull it together for the run through. You don't prejudge, you don't uh, make any, you're just sharpening your eyes and then they blow you away in the run through. They pull it together for competition. So, you know, we see mm -hmm. both aspects of that. But again, the feedback that you've heard out in the community on things, like nothing has changed. Nothing mm -hmm. has changed on like um, kind of what key things are there. Tammy, you have one? Yeah. I have a couple questions. <laughs> um, so in our country, we see a lot of F5s just doing like a foot flex oh, to yes. separate the two nights. And, mm -hmm. but I don't notice it a lot internationally. So um, I just wanted to verify that that was okay. Well, yeah. only do this. Mm -hmm. Because when I asked once before to some other senior mm -hmm. technical controllers, it was anything that separates the night, whether it's a down or a flick or any move. And so, you know, here it's kind of evolved into that, but I just haven't been seeing it internationally. So it was a little bit, I was yeah. just wondering about it. Um, I did ask about it at, at the time, but that was about, I don't know, maybe three months ago. So you know, I just want to make sure that we're following what's happening at the at the world yeah, standard. Sure. That was my uh, first question. My second oh. question is about the flyover acro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> questions on how to code it. I mean, somebody okay. has kind of given me some information, but I don't know if you could go through the process. Sure. And also, what is it being judged on? Mm, oh, yeah. We don't have any information. The, you know, okay. Documents. So I feel like at this point, it's a lot of hearsay. Yeah. Uh, but see, whatever happens at the world level trickles down. And I know we're going to see that acro at our um, yeah. Junior Olympics. And I just okay. want to make sure I know how to tech control it. Okay. And, you know, okay. what coach, co a lot of coaches are asking me, what are we being judged on? Is it the base? Is it the person flying over? So, okay talk about those couple of things that would be great <laughs> i have some info for the last question sammy because as an instructor in the um, judges instructor we discuss this acro we discuss the c acros in general because 
uh, judges in general has some uh, problems with the C because I think it's more clear when it's A, acro, the group, you have the scale and it's yep. easy to recognize. For B, you have exactly the same and for P2. But for the C, you have a combine. For sure, it's a combine and all the combine is different. But we discuss and as a group, we are going to send some information Great. What we are looking for when the C is something with the future swimming connect and stay or connect and go could be some criteria to as a just take a look. And when you are only, well, not only, but you are flying about the second formation, we are going to say something different, but we are okay. going to send some clarification for judges and for sure for sure for the coaches it's important to know where where in which point we are for sure it's the whole thing because you need it's not only about height but about height we are going to put something specific in between these two subgroups in C. That would be great because as you said my observation is that the judges really understand the A and Bs. Yeah. The C's are very hard for them. So as a coach, it's yeah. a little it's concerning to choose one of those because if they're not, you yeah. know, if we haven't but, quite decided how to judge it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But as a technical controller, it's different because you are sure. declaring positions. So that's a different thing. And we need to say something important for the height in the, like normally it's a split position or, or, right. or wherever. So probably it's, yeah, it is. shoulders need to yeah. be correct. Uh, yeah. If you declare one old or old and turn or two olds or wherever needs to, we want to see the shoulders. Okay. I could That's probably... a person that, that they're going over, right? Yes. Okay. I could probably yeah. elaborate a bit. I mean, I had the benefit, Victoria, of hearing some of the judges meetings in Markham yeah. about Group C about you know the small when is it a small construction when is it a big yeah Those probably for types. judges it's not so clear the small constructions no. and and the big no. one so for that uh, make a simplification in the information for judges and take a look okay the c but with the connection or the c with flying about and just like a general terms it's easy for judges to understand about height what it's supposed to pay attention and look for. Um, as far as the coding, Tammy, and anyone else who's doing the fly above formation, the first position code would be the base if they can be at their shoulders. Remember okay. that for a position to be for a position to be okay, it's by the shoulders or by the knees. If they can't mm -hmm. get it to their shoulders, don't declare it. Yes. You know? Um and that's what the advice I, I've given to coaches. But you at least need to see that they've pushed up. It doesn't need to stay up there the whole time. You just need to see one push that it got up mm -hmm. to their shoulders. Okay, check. I saw the owl position. Fantastic. The second position then is the position of the flyer. So whether they're- yeah, I think that's what's something. confusing to everybody. Correct. But that is what is being done. And that is- Again, with the new catalog coming, this will be beautifully more explained. I think it's more, as we have innovated at an exponential rate in the past 18 months, it's just, we haven't been able to keep up, you know, the number of clarifications yeah. makes, we could have like a university four-year course on this at this point. Sure. <laughs> out of, uh, but yeah, for that acrobatic, the, the person who's being jumped over is position one, if you can get it to the shoulders, the flyer is the second position. And if they happen to do a second, let's say, uh, I don't know, they do a tuck pike and yeah. Okay, a pike and then a line, then that would be your bonus. Would okay. be yeah. Um, so that's on that. And then for the night, you're right. There, I mean, the intention was always a combination of two nights. Right. Um, I know. Mm. Yeah. So I think again, there is nothing really explicit in writing. Yeah. It makes it hard. What we would obviously prefer to see is obvious, an obvious change. We're, of course, seeing the little flick. Um, I think there was some issue with one we saw that was just like this. 
Mm -hmm. Like a small wave. That wasn't, it was really changing from a knife. But mm -hmm. if they go, like you said, like flex their foot, like right out of it, I feel like that's maybe a bit more obvious. But to coaches listening, the more obvious you can make it, the happier technical controllers will be. And, um, and it'll be more creative. So, you know, try and make it obvious for us to know, okay, it's two. Trust me, that will be clarified when we can. Yeah, yeah. I think the apnea, you know, time limits, this has become very desirable. Yes, of <laughs> course it has, the little flip. But we, we know we can change it now. The train's left the station. So we're like, yeah. you know, we know we can revise in the next version and make things clearer. But you know, we respect the fact we can't throw a wrench in where we're at right now. Right, right. And change okay. our calls all of a sudden when it's been final season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you one more acro question? Sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay if you don't know the answer, but um, when somebody submits a code, mm. once they perform it in a competition, is that when it becomes like a code for everybody to use? I believe so, but that would be okay. the role to call. Yeah, it's supposed sure, to be a okay. process. I, I yeah, you have. Wondering. Yeah, we need to wait until uh, Aqua publish. I think. Okay, so once it hits the website. Yeah, the first time is for sure for the team who asked for sure, the code. Sure. That's the, the rule. And then we need to wait Aqua publish, make public the, the Aqua, the value, and all the things. And then you are allowed to use. I think it's that the process. Okay, great. That's another question I get a lot, you know? Sure, yeah. And again, it's been an evolution based on the yeah. volume of applications that have come sure. in and kind of yeah. just managing yeah. this new aspect again. But yeah, the event, innovation's been amazing. There's a, when for tech controllers, there's a lot of new codes to learn too yeah. and get up to speed on. Um, okay, we have more questions in the yeah. chat. Um the next one, I'm not sure I can understand. Se tomará en cuenta los movimientos dentro de la rutina respetando las transiciones. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, no sé de quién es esta pregunta, pero no, no la comprendo. La siguiente es la de Sonia, o sea, la persona que la hizo, por favor, si, si puede, o levante la mano nomás y pregunte, o, o la vuelvo a escribir. La siguiente es Sonia. Sé que la temporada empezó, pero podría ayudar si pueden poner en un documento que hay que tener a mano para esta temporada, ya que sea. Ok, Sonia is asking about make like um, the complete documents we need for this season because so many documents come out. So we, if we can send something, I think it's that, Sonia, something all together, the documents, we, yes, for sure, we can put all together all the documents we need to, to do this. Uh, next one is Leilani. Can you talk about your experience of T9s or R6 with the split through? Okay. Um, sure. I mean, between Victoria <laughs> and I, I had two World Cups. Um, T9 thrust. Thrust. Okay. Just, you know, it's not a thrust. Um, you know, and I don't think I'll speak to the obvious, the sliding, the being at your knees, like the obvious, but I have seen some T9s where there is, it's almost like a porpoise. It's, it, that is not a thrust. Um, but if we see some sort of, you know, up down action, we know you're good. Um, our six opening, um, so sorry, that is a closing. Um, there can be some creativity with the legs. We're looking from a split to a vertical. Some people start in middle split. We are looking for a 360. We need to see clearly that you've done 360 degrees, um, not three quarters, um, but there can be um, slight creativity with the legs going up and that is okay. We're starting to see that, but mm -hmm. you can, as long as on the R5 or the R6. Yeah. Remember, we are not judging the execution. We are just no. checking if it's, it's done. done or not. That's, I think it could be the difference in between. And um, throws, I'm assuming throw. the question is a throw versus a lift, which we know yeah. is an issue. Again, it will be cleaned up um, in the next catalog. Anastasia is aware. But in a throw, um, there should be a repulsion phase. Mm -hmm. like, and for me as a tech controller, despite the height issue, like you will see a pop. 
you will see some sort of pop in it. Yes, it's hard between a lift and a throw. We cannot look under the water. So benefit to the athlete. If they've declared a throw and it's it's clearly we can see a disconnect, like feel it in the in the there's like a speed of movement aspect to it that you will see. Um, and that's the best we can do until things are revised for the future. Again, we're not trying to, you know, get into the weeds and catch, you know, be punitive. But if we clearly saw a bit of a disconnect, a bit of a pop in it, then we're like, okay, that was a throw. Yeah. Also, Leilani asked if doesn't need to come out with the water to count the head. No, nope. it's not necessary, but. Yeah, and but be careful because I know the DD from the throws are higher than the lift, but for judges, the high chart is different too. So not necessary using the throw, you are achieve a better or a higher total uh, score because the lift has higher. So be careful. It's not necessary throws are better for your team. Sometimes put a, a lift you you are at higher scores okay another one uh, ariadna is asking how to declare the c the accuracy but you you answer cara the next one in aw4 is compulsory okay hacer el cambio de piernas durante los tres segundos requeridos o puedo realizo dos cambios en vertical bend knee Posterior a eso, solo estiro la flexionada, fishtail, y regreso. Ok. Um, it's asking about AW4. If it's compulsory, in, during the three seconds, change the legs or two changes and then go to fishtail and then... Deja ok. Yeah, because it's like one, two, and then go here, but this leg is sustained yeah. during the three seconds. That's good. Yeah, yeah. you could simply for airborne weight four, you see some, you could just hold a bent knee position for three seconds, and that would be fine too. So, yes, you can switch, or you could literally just do a one position hold. Some teams do this and then just do a beautiful pattern change. Yeah, yeah, used to move. Mm -hmm. Okay, something else? Okay. Well, more than an hour. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, Cara, and thank you all the coaches. We know we need more coach education, and that's the idea. So... As soon as you, we need something or you need something for us, please ask and be in contact and ask for more information or more thumbs or more explanations. Oh, we have Jimena. You have something to ask? Jimena Contreras? Jimena? Sí. Sí, sí hola, ¿qué tal, eh, Victoria? Bien. Buen día, este, mira, preguntarte algo. En la, en la parte del manual, eh, eh, revisando yo el manual, cuando uno declara algo eh, eh, de un nivel mayor de dificultad, pero en la rutina haces menos, este, este, ¿se toma como válido? O sea, ¿Hay alguna parte en el manual donde podamos tener ese sustento? Uh, por ejemplo, si tú declaras una R5 y realizas una R3. Si yo declaro una W, una W4, y uh -huh. hago una W5. Bueno, pero ahí hiciste algo... Perdóname, eh, una no. doble... Declaro, ah, declaro una W5, perdón, y hago no. una W4. Ok. The question is, uh, Cara, if she declares a W5, but did... Uh, no, sorry. She declares a W4, but did a W5. Is it okay or not? It's, it's okay, yeah because airborne weight four, like I said, it could just be that one leg hold for a whole three seconds, whereas five has to be stable and fixed. But if you happen to do that, you've under declared, but technically the definition, you'd be okay. 
Thanks. More questions? Algo más? Okay, thank you so much. And for sure, we will be in contact for all the season and for future because we know we are still moving and and reevaluating the the system. So for sure, we are in contact for future. So be careful with the um, uh, use the WhatsApp group or write. Tammy is in charge all the coaches subcommittee. So you can write Tammy or ask your coach leader in the WhatsApp from your country and send the questions for them and be in touch. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Wendy, you have a question too? Wendy, tenés una pregunta? Wendy Mayor? Bueno. Sí, ¿cómo estás? ¿Se me escucha? Sí. Hola, Victoria. Buenas tardes a todos. And tengo una pregunta. Uh -huh. Si yo hago una connection uh -huh. en dos piernas arriba, que es descrito como conexión 4, uh -huh. yo puedo declarar una conexión 3 porque estoy cumpliendo con lo descrito en el manual. Yeah. Uh, sí, creo que es lo mismo que preguntaron antes. Okay. If she declares, yes. I think it's the same question, a W4, but uh, no, sorry, she declares a W3, but yeah. did a W4, is it okay because she did at least the three? A W3 being a rise. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah, she declares, she said the question is, declare C3, oh, C3, C3, sorry, a connection, C3, but did C4. Oh, yeah, technically. I think it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, you are under declare. Está subdeclarando, pero estaría okay. Thanks. As long as it's the right direction, right? Because a C3. Yeah, you can be side yes. of, yeah, it, of it, back. It, El tema va a estar... Back or side. Yeah. So that's what, la pierna puede estar as... recostado en la espalda, entonces estaría ok, siempre que se cumpla lo que estás haciendo subdeclarar. Ok. Just remember in the C3s, regardless whether it's one or two legs, we're still looking at up in the VP cone, so yeah, just be yeah. aware of that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Carl, for your time and your patience for all the questions. And probably we, we are still asking for more. And thank you all. Bye-bye and see you soon, Hope. And remember, next, next uh, Zoom will be for artistic impression. It's so, so important in these new rules. And it's a new factorization so remember the artistic impression now the weight in the final score is much higher so be prepared and prepare your questions for the artistic impression session next saturday